call our meeting to order for February 13th. This is the Committee on Legislative Matters. Um, it's unusual, but we have a member of the public with us. Well, I heard they were allowed to come, so. Absolutely, and this is when we, we ask you for, do you have any comment you want to make before we get started? <laughs> well, I, sure. Excellent. Um, I'm Susan Swift. I'm the head of school of the Montessori School of Northampton. And I understand that, hi, how are you? <laughs> Hello. <laughs> um, and I understand that you are looking into making, to putting um, school zones outside That's of That's the very next thing we're going to do. That's so what I just thought. <laughs> and I think it's great. Good. That's why I'm here. Thank you. All right. If you and if this is a committee meeting, so if you have any questions as we go along, great. Thank you. Make a okay. sign and we'll chat with you again. Okay. Unlike council, where we can't talk, ah, we can talk here. Oh, good. And we're glad to have company because good. Sometimes <laughs> we Excellent. Uh, so, a motion to approve our minutes. Uh, you need to minutes. Second. Second. Any, do they need any help, or are they okay? Good day. Thank you. Okay. All in favor? All right. So that brings us to the reason you're here. Uh, it's 17.223, an ordinance relative to school zones. It was referred to here on 1-5, and it comes from transportation, does it? Or does it come from you individually? It comes from me, and it's been referred to transportation parking, which is not reviewed yet because of a scheduling problem that didn't meet last month. So it's still on the docket. Huh, for that. Yeah. Well, why don't we discuss it since we have a guest here? Yes. We typically don't do anything until the other committee has okay. chimed in, and because then if they want to make some updates or changes, sure. we'll do that here. So, but why don't you discuss it for us, and we'll get public yep. input, and then it'll probably it hang around the Linux meeting. But yep. we want to make this a meaningful visit for you. So. <laughs> I appreciate that. <laughs> um. Well, this would this would establish new school zones and alter others. A school zone is, um, of course, a, a place, a geographic area around a school uh, where uh, uh, traffic speed can be reduced to 20 miles an hour when children are present, um, usually in the mornings and the afternoons. Um, going down the chart here. Well, first I'll note that in Section A, I believe we amended it during the last meeting. I'm not sure. I was like. Unless I was I was I was dreaming that, but we need to eliminate section A, which says the city, which would say the city council shall establish no schools in the absence of a favorable recommendation of the transportation and parking commission. Uh, the solicitor suggests we uh, delete that provision. Um, he thinks it's a, a separation of powers issue. Uh -huh. I don't know if it is, but I'm fine deleting it. So. And uh, then we have a table. Uh, describing all the, the school zones. First is the Bridge Street School Zone. Currently, the Bridge Street School Zone is surprisingly only on Union Street and Carson Street, but not Bridge Street itself. So it would extend the, the school zone um, essentially along Lampin Park. Mm -hmm. But there's school zone signs out there. No. No? Not on the Bridge Street? I don't think so. The signs you see are for the trucks. Uh -huh. so, the, the there's so there's a place. crossing sign. Where right. right. They're not. I saw the crime. That must be what made me think it was school zone signs. Yeah, and there's also like this old illuminated sign that indicates you have to bear to the right. Yeah, they they back before the the curve was corrected. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that kind of looks like a blinking school zone sign, like all the other other elementary schools have. Yeah. And I think ultimately Bridge Street schools should have a blinking sign too. Um, so this would enable us to do that. Excellent. It um, updates the name of um, what was College Church School, and it was Cushions Program campus. Mm -hmm. um, the next change is the, is the Montessori School. This is on Industrial Drive. Uh, the school zone would extend from Bradford Street to a point 380 feet northerly. And then on Bates Street, <coughs> extending from Bradford Street all the way to North Street. So it would cover that whole area. It would encompass um, uh, the, um, the Montessori school on the one hand of the street, and then the um, uh, the the, ex the um, uh, expansion. Um, the upper school. 
I'm sorry? The upper school, we're calling it. The upper school, right. thank you. So both, both sides of the street, um, and I think there'll be two crosswalks now, if I'm not mistaken. And there's also, of course, the bike path there, which is not a legal reason to have a school, a school zone, but it's a kind of an ancillary benefit. Um, why would we have it? Smith College Campus School is um, about two streets. Um, first, Prospect Street, no change, um, because there's actually a sign that says school zone there, although there's no actual school zone. And that road is entirely 20 miles an hour anyway, so that's no change. But on State Street, it would extend uh, from the northern edge of Bedford Terrace to a point 60 feet north of the northern edge of Trumbull. Um, <coughs> the speed limit on, on State is, is normally 25 miles an hour, so dropping it to 20 um, is not a big deal. Uh, and I'd also add something that's not on here, but I have an amendment that I, that I intend to bring to the Transportation Park Commission, which would add a school zone on Prospect Street in front of the Landert Rinsford mm -hmm. Academy, in front of the Y. Um, I think it makes sense to have a school zone there. It's um, right before a four-way stop. Well, and that that's not 25 miles an hour there either, then. No, like, that's People 35. go pretty good there. So. They do. But they're going to be either slowing to a stop or proceeding from a full stop. So I don't think it's going to be particularly uh, burdensome for drivers. It also serves a public school. It serves Jackson Street School because you may notice there's a crossing guard there. So kids cross Prospect and then they go to Jackson Street. Sometimes they take the bike path to Jackson Street across Prospect. Um, so it would it would have it would serve two schools in that location. Um, I have spoken to the principals or, or directors of each. Um, of each institution, and they're all supportive. And I just want this to be vetted by the Transportation Parking Commission. Um, all the measurements come from the DPW, though, so I think it's pretty much ready to go. All these deletions, finally, at the end, uh, I might have said this last time, this is just the city ordinance trying to replicate what's already in state law. And so it's already in state law, let's just keep it there and as opposed to try to imperfectly do it. And, and for our massive audience watching at home, <laughs> school zones only go through grade eight, correct? Correct. So eight and under qualifies for a school zone, which is why the high school and the Vogue school don't have them. Eight to kindergarten. Eight to kindergarten. So strangely, you couldn't have a school zone at a preschool, and you can't have it at the high school. So go figure. That's, that's the Infinite state Infinite wisdom law. of the exactly. state. Yeah. So but I, what I'd like to do is to expand the school zones to the extent to which we're able to expand them under current law. Mm -hmm. It's not to say if there's a need, we can't get a waiver, try to get a waiver from Mass DOT in the future, but this this is everything we can do with our own home rule authority. Mm -hmm. So, Councilor O'Donnell, you, we did talk about this last time, and I just wanted to, if, if it is kindergarten, I probably need to correct my minutes because I had in here uh, must have students between grade one through eight inclusive. That's correct. Okay. No, so it's, it's not, not kindergarten. Not kindergarten. Okay. But yeah. One is the lowest. Mm -hmm. Sorry okay, about that. Mm -hmm. All righty. Any feedback from anyone on the committee? We've got to wait for this to uh, come back to us from transportation and parking. But, uh, well, I just I want to say, you know, I've gotten a number of e emails um, from constituents in Ward 3 um, who, from representing all three schools, school zones, and I know we have two members of the public here. Um, so there's a lot of enthusiasm about this. Um, around Bridge Street School, I think this is great because I, I've been pulled into discussions around uh, the, the problem with pickup drop-off and how things get so congested there. Well, part of the reason it's so congested is because fewer kids are walking and that I think that crossing Bridge Street is a big part of that. I, I spent one morning observing there and I saw three kids cross during the morning, you know, for, you know with a crossing guard there. And so, um, you know, I, I think one of the ways to address the, the, the backup with the pickup drop-off is to encourage people mm -hmm. to walk and make things safer. And this would be a huge step in that. So, perfect timing. I think you're right, and I think I mean, the, the locations of these school zones will serve the schools, but I think they serve broader traffic coming needs as well. I think State Street's pretty obvious since you're 
gateway to downtown where the Montessori school is is a big there's a big traffic problem there anyway because right. it's a cut through so hopefully it serves the schools but it also enhances the overall transportation system in the city mm -hmm. so just uh, what we're going to do mm -hmm. um, <coughs> is the transportation and parking commission needs to still weigh in on this before we can take action on it but i'm i'm getting a good feeling that we like it so but they need to crack at it first sure. to see if they tweak it at all before it comes here from it'll visit us one more time and go to council from there but it looks like it's all in good shape and should go okay any other any comment any more comment on anything uh yes question would, would the designation of school zone come with an allocation of money for school for uh, school park? No, but it comes with some hopefully some nice signs from DPW. Yeah. But there's no with, yeah. no gold at the end of the rainbow in your school zone other than some signs. Right. And a and a new speed limit. Right. Yeah. And what about signage or? Did you just said signs. Yeah, D DPW would when we when we create it they would sign it because it once it exists they put a sign up. And so yeah and there's different kinds of signs obviously if you go to um, most of our elementary schools you go to Leeds or Jackson Street well, Jackson Street's a good example on Jackson Street itself there's a flashing sign mm -hmm. if you're on Barrett Street there's just a regular sign that says school zone and then I think it has I think it's like 8 45 to 9 30 and then in afternoon time so there's kind of an animated electronic sign and then a standard sign and my hope for Bridge Street, at least, is we'll have an electronic sign. Mm -hmm. And depending on funds, we'll just install the most appropriate sign. Yeah. The I think it maybe even could, because that one that's there flashing now about the corner could be a school sign. That would, I was, would, yeah, would right, save them. Purpose, yeah. You know, because anything they got to hook up to electricity is expensive, but they could maybe just convert that to, say, school right. rather than corner. I mean, right. if you blow the corner now, you end up in the hole that used to be the Shaw's Motel. So. Exactly. That should wake them up. Yeah. All right. Anything else on this? So, yeah. Well, so the money. So, in terms of, does this come out of the the city's budget, or because we're in compliance with the state, does the state give us money to cover the costs, or? No, I don't think I've ever said the words. The state just gave us money for a special, <laughs> um, with with a few exceptions. But no, this is just um, just with. Be expanding yeah. the city's responsibility. Yeah, I mean, you know there are just limited circumstances under which we can establish certain traffic control devices, and this is one of them. Um, I think there are there are, there might be limitations. Like if you get, like if we were to develop it in um, connection with federal funding, suddenly I think we need some kind of sign off from MassDOT to establish a school zone or something. But we're not going to get any of that. So. Mm -hmm. I don't know what it makes us eligible for in the future in terms of showing that we've taken these steps. That's always a possibility, but no, no direct funding. I don't think, I mean, the basic signs are not that expensive. The cost should be minimal, I would think. It's not, you know, we've talked about other things where we, we would be swapping out a whole slew of signs. This is just installing a few signs, I would think. Mm -hmm. right. be, uh, okay. So I guess it's bad news as far as money. To get some nifty new signs. We like signs. Sounds good. Good signs, and hopefully it habituates people to know. Like on State Street, if you're not from here, you don't know you the don't back know, of the you school. You know that it's a school. Yeah. Right. yeah. Well, it used to be the laundry, I think. The okay. Yeah. School, so. so just <laughs> letting people think know it's a laundry. Exist. Good. So we got a motion to um, postpone this to our next meeting. All right. Just one more thing. Okay. Oh. I'm on the board of Cutchins, so I just want to make sure that I have that on the table. We're just changing the name. There's what? a school. We're just changing the name to the right school. Well, we're, and, oh, okay. Yeah, we're not really doing anything except changing the name of the school. You don't even get any new signs. <coughs> no money, no signs, no nothing. Just to change the name. But that's your formal disclosures. Yeah. Okay. Just stop. Disclosure accepted. Stop me if I say something. I don't know. That's right. If you go to a, if you go to a naughty place, we'll warn you. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so we're sort of mid continuance, aren't we? Yeah, I, I move to continue the next. All in favor? All right. Great. Thank you. Just that easy. Just thank, thank you for coming. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, but by all means, we love having company. Good. Yeah.
We'll bring cookies next time. Okay. Can I make yeah. your plug about the budget hearings? Oh yeah, come to the budget hearings. Okay. They're we'll going to be a lot more exciting than this. Just a little longer. <laughs> You don't want to bring cookies, you want to pack a lunch for those. All right, all right. You just warn us. Okay. We'll figure out the right food. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye-bye. You can bring peanuts. Peanut butter. Oh, it's okay here. It's not peanut-free? We're not, no, we're okay. I think we're okay with peanuts. We'll find out. <laughs> all right. So that was school zone. So next we have the... Oh, looking out at the agenda, I'm looking at school zones. So next is 17.224, an ordinance regarding fair minimum wage. It was set here on 2.217. And this is also, so you can keep your scorecard straight, this is going to go to finance during the council meeting on Thursday. And typically it would have to come back here unless everyone is okay with having our way with it tonight, understanding that it's gonna to go to finance on Thursday. And then theoretically, if finance doesn't have anything really to say about it, it could get dealt with right at council. If it, that's your wish. If you want it to come back here, it can come back here. We can have our discussion and then decide, do, do we wanna see it again? Or do we wanna see it again only if finance does something to it? I'm fine with that. And I'll just note that at our last meeting, we had public here who was concerned about mm -hmm. how things moved through mm -hmm. committee. Yeah. So. Yep. And I, for one, are committed to not having things rattle around in committees forever unless there's something meaningful happening to them. And then, you know, so I'm totally okay to, when we're done with our discussion, if everybody wants to, given this a one way trip to finance on Thursday and letting the council have its way with it right after finance is done with it because I really don't see that much in here that affects that's going to affect finance so that way you can all have at it once uh, finance is done. I mean, show sort of a neutral recommendation maybe would that be the best? It, whatever when we're done discussing it whatever you like okay, you know Mike that might make sense just because <clears throat> then whatever happens yeah. Thursday happens Thursday just I won't be there on Thursday I'm going to be out of town. Mm -hmm. So okay. it can go to finance. It can go to the entire council. You can decide what you want to do with it. So is yeah. this the only committee that it's gone to? Yes, I think so. Okay. Yeah, just listed matters in finance. And I thought because of the nature of it, I you know in this committee we obviously and the solicitors reviewed it, so we should review its legal character. Right. You know, as members of the public have reminded us, <coughs> it's our, our duty to do. And this one is sort of interesting legally. Mm -hmm. So I thought maybe we could redo it from that standpoint, and then mm -hmm. finance could make a financial decision. So, since you're the sponsor, okay, go for it. Okay. Um, well, simply put, there is a state minimum wage law. Um, minimum wage is eleven dollars in Massachusetts. It's always at least fifty cents higher than the federal minimum wage. Um, and that minimum wage law has been interpreted by the attorney general to apply to the private sector but not to the public sector. So, which is part two on the back. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Pam thoughtfully put it on the back Thank of our order. So, this is what the I'm long and short of it is, the Attorney General said it doesn't apply to municipalities in exactly. the private sector. So, um, and it actually references in this opinion that um, uh, a, a different section of, of state law is where the legislature did intend for cities and towns to set, set policy about wages. And so it's under that authority that I propose this, which says that our policy in Northampton is going to be to pay the state minimum wage <coughs> that otherwise applies to the private sector. And I'm just careful to uh, include that you know, any existing collective bargaining agreement doesn't have to get cracked back open again and renegotiated should there be any, mm -hmm. I have a hard time believing there would be any um, wages paid below a minimum wage that were collectively bargained. But just to cover us, we don't have to do that and it doesn't apply to elected officials. So you don't have to start tallying up your <laughs> hours worked and realizing the poverty wages that you, that you work for, establishing school zones and, and that kind of thing. Um, 
And um, as, so that's what it would do. And as a practical matter, um, the city doesn't have any employees that receive less than minimum wage. The school department has in, in recent past, uh, particularly substitutes. Um, probably this does not apply to the school yeah, I, department. I, I checked on that. And yeah. we, the only control we have over them is to approve their budget in aggregate. Yeah. What they, you know, they have control of what they do with it when they get it. I mean, they, they kind of tell us what they think they're going to do with it, but they can change their mind. And that includes their employees. So this is <coughs> us and the administration and the administration's employees, yeah. but not the schools. And that's because the, the state law, state statute that we're using as our authority to do this actually specifically calls out the school committees. Yeah. It's everything but the school committees. So, um, so it doesn't do that, um, but it codifies a policy. That this mayor and and I, you know, I believe mayors in recent memory have adopted it codifies in the future, so that it's like an actual rule mm -hmm. that applies going forward. It would seem that if the city wants to attract employees to do its bidding, yeah. it's kind of got to pay the minimum the minimum wage, or they'll wind up flipping burgers, yeah. you know, or doing something else to rather than working for us. Exactly. And you know, and even with the substitute teachers, it's hard to tell because. They may be there for a seven and a half hour day or something, but maybe they're only teaching four classes or something. So you really, it's hard to tell exactly. Yeah, I don't know how to find that. Yeah. Substituting in a class. This is a start commission, this isn't it? Nope. Substituting in a classroom should be paid way more <laughs> than minimum wage. I've never done that. Maybe I should try it. Oh, yeah. Have you have it's you just, substituted? Just, yeah, give it a try. <laughs> have you done it? I remember. I, I've done it a few times. I, have I, you have you done it? No, I've never done it. Well, I, I well, have it like the graduate school level, but never <laughs> not like the elementary school. Level. Yeah, I'm not ever. Yeah, try it at a junior high level, middle school. Oh, trial Ooh. by fire. <laughs> um. So, what's your pleasure? This is kind of, I guess, to prove prevent anything from going wrong in the future when the wage changes because we can sort of account for we don't think there's anybody now that isn't paid enough and it doesn't crack open bargaining agreements that are already in place mm -hmm. and assuming when they come around in fact I know for a fact you're going to be talking about that on Thursday because uh, there there's an exact isn't there an executive session on Thursday where the mayor's going to talk about having established some new contracts and, and that sort of thing so they're getting renewed and then, uh, Did I send that to you, or you just knew about it from Susan? I knew about it from talking to the mayor. Okay. So me about that. But it has it has it gone out yet, or? Uh, I I was wondering if I I sent it out on my way here. I was thinking I didn't, and then you just mentioned it. I'm like, well, I, I, I talked. <laughs> <laughs> I was talking to the mayor about yeah. it. He said that's coming up. Okay. So you thought it was. Um, so any other questions on? So this really isn't that time sensitive, right? So, in you know, and to honor what we agreed we would do, that we would send stuff out to committee. Mm -hmm. We have done that. Yeah, this, this is, is that's why it's here. Yeah. You know, the the thought is, does it have to go Thursday to finance, and then come back here again, and then go back to council again? Right. I know. Or can, can we just practice that this is the last? Yeah, this is supposed, theoretically right. supposed to be the last stop, right. but if we... I can't imagine anybody opposing this. I, <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's I, I don't know what why anyone in finance would have a hard time with it, but... I mean, could I ask our administrative system to read, you, she was good enough to look up the rule about this, actually, before the meeting started. I don't know if you would be able to tell us the rule with regards to, if legislative matters, if the act lasts. Well, it says the committee may choose to be the last committee to review any matter that is referred to another council committee. Mm -hmm. May choose. Uh -huh. The committee shall not be required to wait to receive the report of any executive commission. So, so we can. So we have the option at our choice. Up to you. And what I might suggest is we put on the caveat that. If finance and its infinite wisdom chooses to do something to this, yeah. so we may want to see it again. Yeah. But if not, yeah, we can always send it back. Then it can just 
go to finance and if they look at it and do what we're doing, we're going to probably do what you say, yeah, nothing wrong with this since it's kind of already happening. Yeah. Then it can go right to council and y'all can have your way with it and it can be on its way. <coughs> and it wouldn't have to come back here again. Yeah. And this closes a loop, uh, you think of it as a loophole. I mean, there's a state minimum wage law. For some reason, there's a giant loophole of 351 cities and towns that are exempt. So uh, we'd be closing that loophole um, in Northampton. There's probably some other communities that would need that need it more than we do, frankly. Mm -hmm. But if it's a tool, a tool that we can demonstrate, I think that it's valuable. So. Do you think it'll nudge the school department to look at their policies around this? I mean, one thing I was. Well, I, mean, I think the school department has, like, I think the current budget is the first time when they have certified that all their employees are being paid minimum wage. I think they had to do a little adjustment in January when it went up to 11. Mm -hmm. But I remember in the superintendent's budget message, he said this is the first year when he's done that. Okay. So I, I yeah, I think I think so. Um, it was a discussion. It was point of discussion last year. Okay. Um, I mean, we could get into the habit as a council of the council president requesting that information from the superintendent and the mayor before we vote on the budget every year. You know, please let us know if the budget we're voting on for the school department has any sub minimum wage. Make them get out their abacus and yeah. figure it out. Right. We could certainly do that. So, yeah, I, I, that's a good thought. Mm -hmm. So, what's your pleasure here? You're comfortable just moving along with a neutral risk recommendation? And yeah, I move a neutral recommendation. Sorry. Excellent. So the goal would be move it along with the understanding that if finance just says we're fine with it, it can go right to council, it doesn't have to come back here. And uh, it doesn't change, off it goes. You good with that? Yes. Okay. Let's have a vote. Then all in favor, no one, we do it officially, we're, we're on TV. We get caught if we just said, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, So all in favor of a neutral recommendation with the anticipation this will not be back, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Good. Excellent. And that can uh, be on its way. And uh, any new business that we did not anticipate or would we done everything we need to do? You have oh. a few zoning things coming your way on Thursday, so... The next meeting will be... Oh, the zoning things are public hearing things, so I'll get hold of our good friends at the planning board. Okay. If you haven't been in on one of those yet, the joint... If we do a joint public hearing with the planning board. Sounds like fun. It is fun. <laughs> oh, yeah. Should have been I think I know the, what's coming down the pipe, too. Should have been around for the free range chickens. That was a really good one. I was there. Oh, that's I right. You were there. the advocate. <laughs> yeah. You were the chicken man. And you talked about <laughs> taking a chicken for a ride. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because you, know, you, you can't, you can't, it's, as we said, it's an egg-centric thing, because you can't butcher the chicken <laughs> on site. <laughs> so you got to take it Good. for a ride. <laughs> you want to eat the chicken. <laughs> yeah, we can go up the ground. Chicken's got to have an accident <laughs> on site. Move to adjourn. <laughs> you see the comic today, the uh, Mother Goose today? Mother Goose was at the restaurant. She was going to have El Dorado chicken. She says, that sounds good. Well, how's it made? Well, you run it over with a Cadillac. Nice. <laughs> El Dorado chicken. <laughs> All right, with that, a motion to adjourn. <laughs> second. All, a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Excellent.